Have a fun video you'd like to see featured on NCW Life? Email us at newsphotos at ncwlife.com. Good evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Eric Grandstrom filling in for Grant Olson. Before we get to today's top stories, let's take a quick look outside our weather window. And it was kind of a day of high cirrus clouds, a high cover, if you will. A little bit of sun breaks here and there as we look down upon Brewster and Pateras in the uh, foreground. As we look at our SkyFi camera provided to us from the folks at SkyFi, not a bad day today, but I hope you enjoy the dry weather because a change is definitely coming. And now a few of our stories we're following for you tonight. Candidates for the Chelan County Port Deputy Director position were interviewed today. Republican Dan Newhouse holds a press conference regarding the increased spill over Lower Snake River and Lower Columbia River dams. And Chelan County Commissioners react to comments made by the U.S. Interior Secretary about the reintroduction of grizzly bears in the North Cascades. First, we begin tonight. The Chelan County PUD is taking immediate action to shut down unauthorized Bitcoin mining operations. At their Monday meeting, PUD commissioners directed staff to take all necessary steps to enforce the moratorium on unpermitted cryptocurrency operations, including imposing available fees and penalties and considering new ones. Disconnecting service and reporting unauthorized loads to law enforcement as power theft or to fire officials to protect public safety. PUD General Manager Steve Wright said the problem has created a dangerous situation. I think it's deeply troubling that someone was going from 500 kilowatt hours to 11,000 kilowatt hours in an apartment, putting their neighbors at risk. So Tom, uh, John used the word thermal. I want to make it stronger than that. It was a fire risk that was created. And so we are talking about a severe <clears throat> human health and safety issue that was uncovered here. And this has got to stop. We have to find a way to address this. Now, during Monday's meeting, the board received a report of unauthorized Bitcoin mining discovered last week in a Wenatchee apartment, a Malaga home, and Chelan mini storage units. PUD crews disconnected power for the unauthorized services. A moratorium on new Bitcoin mining permits had been imposed back in March. Crypto well, I, I know that uh, we have it's on the agenda for discussion at today's Chelan County Commissioners meeting. The board is in the process of reviewing a possible moratorium on Bitcoin mining operations in line with the city of Wenatchee and the Chelan County PUD. But Commissioner Kevin Overbay says the process will likely result in regulating how the activity will be zoned. You know, I, I know that uh, we have had some. Um, you know, initial conversations about identifying certain areas of the county, whether, you know, in industrial zones and things like that, that, uh, you know, there might be some um, uh, infrastructure already in place in the PUD that we might be able to identify and, and look at that and say, you know, this, this would probably be the best area to be able to do that. Um, but, um, you know, it, it's just one of those things that, uh, you know, I do know that the cities, multiple cities have already passed moratoriums and the, and the PUD is also looking at that as well and moving into an enforcement aspect of things. And so, um, but uh, just opening up those lines of communication with the PUD um, and being able to, you know, really take a good hard look at this and, and make sure that we're not you know, jumping into something, you know, before we really know all the facts. Overbay says the work the county, um, says that the county will work closely with the PUD to ensure that Bitcoin mining company or make that they will comply with all fire and public safety codes. Four candidates vying for the post of deputy director of the Chelan County Port District were interviewed during today's Port Commission meeting. The deputy director will report directly to the executive director and work with elected commissioners and be a candidate for appointment as executive director Patrick Jones departs at the end of this year. The four finalists emerged from a field of 26 applicants. The finalists for the deputy position include Todd Coleman of Star Idaho, James Kuntz from Walla Walla, Jeff McIrvin of Wenatchee, and Allison Williams from Wenatchee. The candidate interviews were open to the public at the Confluence Technology Center. Stay tuned tomorrow for a full report on those interviews. Coming up next, Representative Dan Newhouse holds a press conference regarding the increased spill on Lower Snake River and Lower Columbia River dams. And Chelan County Commissioners react to comments made by the U.S. Interior Secretary about the introduction or the reintroduction of grizzly bears in the North Cascades. I'm Eric Grandstrom and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News.
Stormy Mountain Brewing and Local Public House, featuring great family dining in downtown Chelan. We've got burgers, pub fare, and the best barbecue around. Try one of our award-winning sauces made fresh here in-house. So grab the whole gang and come on down. Stormy Mountain Brewing. Beer, barbecue, friends, and beer. J&J Snack Foods makes a lot of dough-filled products. It's really hard to attract labor in this area. We've reached out to Goodwill, and Goodwill came through to help us get that achieved. John started here at the plant a couple of months ago. We promoted him to a dough maker. He's been doing well. I'm actually doing great. I'm finally getting more notice and appreciated for my work here. I love the products we make here. If you're struggling finding the labor that you need, reach out to Goodwill. Goodwill, there's more behind the store. Welcome back as our news continues on this Tuesday, April 3rd. On Monday, Representative Dan Newhouse hosted a press conference in the Tri-Cities with a variety of stakeholders who opposed the court-mandated spill order scheduled to begin today at the end of the, at the, end of, uh, at the 8 Lower Snake River. And welcome back to NCW Life Evening News for this Tuesday, April 3rd. In other news that we're following today, on Monday, Representative Dan Newhouse hosted a press conference in the Tri-Cities with a variety of stakeholders who oppose the court-mandated spill order scheduled to begin today at the eight Lower Snake River and Lower Columbia River dams. U.S. District Judge Michael Simon in Portland ruled that more water must spill over dams from April to mid-June to help young salmon migrating to the ocean. Opponents complained that the spill will mean less water to produce electricity, which increases the utility bills for Northwest ratepayers. As I said, increasing spill starts tomorrow. It has an estimated price tag of over $40 million in higher electricity rates from increasing spill, spill in just this one year alone. And to me, that's totally unacceptable and, and avoidable. So today, we're, we're standing here not just to say that we will work together to prevent further spill increases and rising electricity rates due to this order, but we're working to save our dams from the prospect of being breached. Now, some of the Tri-City and state leaders Newhouse met with Monday also argued that more spill could harm rather than help young salmon. Newhouse said during the event that a bipartisan bill that could be voted on later this month would keep the status quo at the Snake and Columbia River dams until at least 2022 with no court ordered change in operations. SR-28 was closed down overnight after a two-vehicle injury crash involving a semi blocking the roadway. State troopers report the accident occurred shortly before 11 p.m. on SR-28 and mile post 12. The truck driver identified as 56-year-old Daryl Sheriff of East Wenatchee was westbound when he crossed over the center line into the eastbound lane. The truck struck an oncoming SUV driven by 73-year-old Patricia Hash, also of East Wenatchee. Hash was injured and transported to Confluence Health for treatment. Her condition is unknown. The driver of the truck was not injured, but he will be cited for negligent driving, according to the State Patrol news release. The highway remained closed till about 2.30 in the morning. A Royal City man is charged with a DUI in connection with an injury accident yesterday in Grant County. It happened on I-90 at Moses Lake. State troopers say 21-year-old Oscar Ramirez Landeros caused the crash after his car drifted off the road, striking a jersey barrier, and then colliding with a sedan driven by 28-year-old Adam Bouchard of Spokane. Bouchard and his passenger escaped unhurt, but Bouchard was injured and transported to Samaritan Hospital. 
You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, your sports update and our feature story tonight. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Stay with us. Hello, Wenatchee Valley. Christian Chandler here with Bay Equity Home Loans. Make your dream of building your own home a reality today. Bay Equity Home Loans has teamed up with Real Homes to make building your new home a smooth process. Bay Equity Home Loans of Wenatchee offers new construction loans, FHA 3.5% down, and VA 100% construction loans. Stop on by or give us a call today. Hi there, my name is Patrick and I'm the branch manager here at New American Funding. Applying for a home loan is an exciting time. You may have a lot of questions about how to meet your home loan goals, the loan process, or your borrowing options. We're here to help. We do things differently here at New American Funding. Not only do we have an array of loan products and a team of specialists to support you, but we get to know you personally. We want to earn your trust and business for life. So stop by our Wenantry or Chelan office or give us a call today. Is this really what we're going to do on our girls' night out? We should go to Club Crow. The bar and grill in Cashmere? Yeah, let's go. Looking for a fun-filled, friendly hometown atmosphere? Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere is the place to be. Hi, this is Justin. Here at Club Crow, we have a full bar and restaurant, live music, a dance floor, pool tables, pull tabs, and live jam sessions the first Sunday of every month. Club Crow in Cashmere, the coolest place in town. And now it's a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. And thanks for staying with us here on this Tuesday night. Villanova claimed its second national championship in three years with last night's 79 62 win over Michigan in the NCAA final. Guard Dante DiVincenzo stole the spotlight, making five three pointers, some highlight reel jams, and a block on one of the Wolverines' best players. He finished with 31 points. Wildcats finished the season 36-4. After a great 2-0 start to the BCHL Interior Division Final Playoff Series at home, the Wenatchee Wild are on the road and trail tonight for Game 3 against the Smoke Eaters. The puck will drop at 7 o'clock at the Kaminco Arena. Game 7, or make that Game 4, is tomorrow night at 7. If necessary, Game 5 would be back in Wenatchee on Friday at the Town Toyota Center. Now, if it goes this far, Game 6 would be back in trail Saturday and then Game 7 here in Wenatchee on Monday. The other remaining BCHL teams are Prince George and Powell River. Spruce Kings have a 2-1 series lead after winning the first two games at home. Powell River won last night in double overtime 3-2 with game four tonight at the Hap Parker Arena. Now I reached out to Arch Ecker, the voice of the Wenatchee Wild. I asked him, I said, okay Arch, I'm kind of new to this whole BCHL thing. How's it work? What happens after this? Well, if Wenatchee wins his series against Trail, then they'll play the winner of Powell River and the Spruce Kings. So that would be next in a best of seven series. Now, if the, if the Wild win the BCHL championship, which is the Fred Page Memorial Cup, then they go on to another round against another hockey team out of Canada. And then if they win that one, then they play for basically the whole Canadian championship. So there's still a lot to be played, possibly for the Wenatchee Wild. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. Turning to the prep schedule for today, even though it is spring break, there is some action and some early game times. Cashmere on the road in Spokane today at a very nice Avista Stadium for a twin bill. They played at Freeman at noon and Sheeney at 2. We'll have some scores for you tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Eastmont on the road to Moses Lake today for a spring break Big Nine contest. In soccer, it's uh, Cashmere was home today hosting Colville while Brewster was on the road at Chelan. Wenatchee just underway at Davis. Also coming up tonight, West Valley at Eastmont. We'll have that live here on the NCW Life Channel at 7 o'clock. Matt Wisen will be alongside Sebastian Moraga with your play-by-play, -play, so be sure and tune in for that. Now coming up the rest of the week here on the NCW Life sports broadcast schedule if you will. After tonight, we'll have more soccer tomorrow as Wenatchee hosts Pasco at a game at the Apple Bowl at 6 o'clock. Then on Thursday, we'll feature game one of the interior division finals between Wenatchee and Trail uh, during hockey nights on the NCW Life Channel. That all starts at 7 o'clock on Thursday. We're back on the Diamond Friday with some high school baseball. Eastmont hosting Moses Lake at Dan White Field. We'll pick up the second of the doubleheader live here at about 5.30 on the NCW Life Channel. Game two of the Wenatchee Trail Playoff Series will be Saturday afternoon at 2. Then we'll be back with some live soccer at Eastmont between the Wildcats and Quincy. That'll be at 5 o'clock live Saturday. 
then game three of the Wenatchee Trail playoffs at 7 o'clock Saturday night. Well, the Mariners, after opening the season, taking two of three from Cleveland, are in San Francisco to begin an eight-game road trip today. Interleague play. It's uh, former Wenatchee Apple Sox Marco Gonzalez on the mound for Seattle going up against the Giants' tie block. Seattle got off to an early start on this one, scoring four runs in the top of the first, bringing eight men to the plate. At last check, they were up and looking to win their third game in the se series of the season, that is. Uh, by the way, Seattle put designated hitter Nelson Cruz on the 10-day disabled list after he sprained his ankle in the dugout following his home run Saturday against Cleveland. To fill the roster spot, the Mariners brought up from AAA, Tacoma, Taylor, Motter, and the hair flip. I still got to work on that like Kyle Seeger. That's a look at sports news. I'm Eric Granster on the NCW Live channel. Turning to our feature of the day, Chelan County Commissioners react to statements from U.S. Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke regarding plans to buy the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Department to reintroduce grizzly bears in the North Cascades wilderness. The secretary said in a recent visit to Washington State that he supports the plans, which contradicts an earlier order by his agency to halt an environmental impact study on the proposal. In their regular interview with NCW Live News, commissioners responded. Well, I think, you know, it was a surprise the way it came out. Uh, given the, the previous comments, we were under the impression that the plan was going to be put on hold. We had serious concerns at the outset because of the way the whole public process had been rolled out and uh, you know we went to open houses that really told us what was going to happen rather than actually looking for that public comment. We've also been told that uh, comments that came from London, England had as much weight as those you know, here and we were you know a little concerned about how uh, you know the public comments were being processed. But having said that, I mean it, it as I mentioned it was a surprise to us that it ended up with uh, the statement that was was issued. Now, when you look at the statement, we really don't know exactly what that means because the options that were rolled out really had quite a variety of, uh, you know, build up to, you know, the the population that they were hoping for, the 200 uh, bears in the North Cascade. So they may start out very few. They may start out with, you know, option B, option C. We don't really know what that means. I did see that uh, you know the secretary said he thinks the grizzlies are magnificent animals, as do I. But I just didn't really. I personally don't feel like they need to be in the North Cascades. <laughs> well, uh, Commissioner Overbear, I think that well, um, considering that the secretary did say that he supported the reintroduction of grizzly bears, but he says he wants to see it done right. Does that? Yeah, it, it you know as as Keith had uh, earlier mentioned. There's, there were multiple options with re reintroduction of the grizzly bear, you know, from uh, just a natural propagation of the bear to, you know, implanting up to 200 bears over a short period of time. And so where that lies, we don't know at this time. Um, I do know that, uh, you know, last year, as you recall, we actually had a joint meeting with uh, Skagit County Commissioners, and uh, we talked about uh, the impacts that it would have. You know, we looked at our, our comprehensive plans. You know, how does this, uh, how does this fit into that? Um, and the impacts that it would potentially have to, uh, to Chelan County and, and some of the, uh, the, the ranchers and the businesses and things like that uh, in these areas that would be close in. And so, you know, to, uh, we, we just need to kind of get a little better feel as to, to what this looks like. I know they're going through an EIS process on this and, and you know, how that's going to vet itself out. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we have to look out for what's in the best interest of, of the citizens of Chelan County as well. And we'll be back in just a moment with a recap of some of our top stories and your complete local weather forecast right after this. I'm Jenny Rojanasatian, and this is Guada TV. Every week we will be bringing you a first look at North Central Washington business, tech, and education news. You'll hear from local influencers and innovators who live right here in the Valley. Together, we'll discuss hot topics, current events, and resources that can support your business, our schools, and this community. Join me every week, and let's get inspired. Lake Chelan Mailboxes find solutions and the best price for all your shipping needs, including UPS, FedEx, and the U.S. Postal Service. We offer a variety of services including quality copies of all sizes, faxing, scanning, sending and receiving email, laminating and notarizing. 
enjoy browsing through our large selection of greeting cards. Lake Chelan Mailboxes supports our military, fire victims, and our community. Come see us at the Plaza in Lake Chelan. Papa Murphy's presents a fresh take on unbaked. Who wants an unbaked pizza? You do. Because unbaked means unprocessed dough and unfrozen vegetables, all prepared fresh by us. So the difference between a pizza fresh from your oven and one pulled from a greasy delivery box? Hi. Unreal. The smell? Unbelievable. Leftovers? Unlikely. Home bake a large Papa's all neat with Canadian bacon, salami, pepperoni, Italian sausage, and ground beef. Just $12. Papa Murphy's. Love at 425 degrees. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. Here's a recap of our top stories tonight. The Chelan County PUD is taking immediate action to shut down unauthorized Bitcoin mining operations. At their Monday meeting, PUD commissioners directed staff to take all necessary steps to enforce the moratorium on unpermitted cryptocurrency operations, including imposing available fees and penalties and considering new ones, disconnecting service and reporting unauthorized loads to law enforcement as power theft and to fire officials to protect public safety. PUD General Manager Steve Wright said the problem has created a dangerous situation. I think it's deeply troubling that someone was going from 500 kilowatt hours to 11,000 kilowatt hours in an apartment, putting their neighbors at risk. So Tom, uh, John used the word thermal. I want to make it stronger than that. It was a fire risk that was created. And so we are talking about a severe <clears throat> human health and safety issue that was uncovered here. And this has got to stop. We have to find a way to address this. Now, during Monday's meeting, the board received a report of unauthorized Bitcoin mining discovered last week in a Wenatchee apartment, a Malaga home, and Chelan mini storage units. PUD crews disconnected power for the unauthorized services. A moratorium on new Bitcoin mining permits had been imposed back in March. Well, the uh, Chelan County Commissioner's Bitcoin uh, cryptocurrency mining on the agenda for their discussion in today's Commissioner's meeting. The board in the process of reviewing a possible moratorium on Bitcoin mining operations in line with the City of Wenatchee and Chelan County PUD. But Commissioner Kevin Overbay says the process will likely result in regarding how the activity will be zoned. You know, I, I know that uh, we have had some... Um, you know, initial conversations about identifying certain areas of the county, whether, you know, in industrial zones and things like that, that, uh, you know, there might be some um, uh, infrastructure already in place in the PUD that we might be able to identify and, and look at that and say, you know, this, this would probably be the best area to be able to do that. Um, but, um, you know, it, it's just one of those things that, uh, you know, I do know that the cities, multiple cities have already passed moratoriums and the, and the PUD is also looking at that as well and moving into an enforcement aspect of things. And so, um, but uh, just opening up those lines of communication with the PUD um, and being able to, you know, really take a good hard look at this and, and make sure that we're not, you know, jumping into something, you know, before we really know all the facts. Overbay says the county will work closely with the PUD to ensure that Bitcoin mining complies with all fire and public safety codes. Well, Highway 28 was closed down overnight after a two-vehicle injury crash involving a semi blocking the roadway. State troopers report the accident occurred shortly after 11 o'clock last night on SR 28 at milepost 12. The truck driver, identified as 56-year-old Daryl Sheriff of East Wenatchee, was westbound when he crossed over the center line into the eastbound lane. The truck struck an oncoming SUV driven by 73-year-old Patricia Hash, also of East Wenatchee. Hash was injured and transported to Confluence Health for treatment. Her condition is unknown. The driver of the truck was not injured, but the uh, he will be cited for negligent driving. According to the State Patrol news release, the highway remained closed until about 2.30 this morning. Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed the partly sunny and dry weather today because a change is coming in the form of a lot of rain over the next several days. Your forecast in a moment. But first, let's again look out to our weather window in north central Washington with our camera view brought to you by SkyFi. Not a bad day today. In fact, maybe a good day for some golf or some outdoor activities with spring break upon us. Temperatures around 50 degree mark. Well, depending on which bank clock you drove past. I went past one today that said it was 60 degrees, so 
I think that bank also might be tied in with the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> but not a bad Monday. Now, as we take a look at the weather, uh, not much wind to speak of across to all of Washington State, in fact. Kind of a calm day to our day today, but always they say the calm before the storm, right? A dry and partly sunny day. Uh, so we had across north central Washington. The further north you were, the more clouds you found. Wet weather will develop tomorrow and continue through the weekend over the entire region. By the weekend, minor flooding issues may develop, so we'll keep a close eye on that. Here's a look at our forecast tonight. We'll see cloudy skies, lows down around 38, winds light from the southwest. Tomorrow, we'll have cloudy skies, light rain off and on, and winds should be calm. Rain chance about 40% tomorrow, and a high tomorrow about 54 degrees, so not too bad. The weather system is a warm one. Tomorrow's expected high in the 50s, and we're going to start warming up as we continue uh, through the rest of the week. Clouds will persist tomorrow night with a slight chance of rain. Lows down around 41. Thursday, 80% chance of heavy rain. In fact, a tenth to a quarter of an inch expected here for the Wenatchee Valley. Highs will be in the mid-50s on Thursday. Friday, cloudy and showers in 57. Rain likely on Saturday with highs in the upper 50s. Sunday, we'll get back to a drier trend with partly sunny skies and high temperatures near 60s. Now, if you're traveling in the upper elevations, maybe you have uh, more plans for your spring break this week. Mountain forecast, snow level to remain at the passes for tonight and tomorrow with 3 to 8 inches of new snow expected to fall between tonight and into tomorrow. Then it turns to rain with heavy rain at times. as the snow level is going to increase all the way to 6,000 feet by Saturday. Lots of rain in the forecast for the Cascades, so we'll keep an eye open on the possibility for some avalanche control as we get through the end of the week and into the weekend. So not too bad, warm temperatures, but again, going to be very wet for tomorrow all the way through Saturday. Hey, if you have a video that you'd like to share with us in our video of the day uh, here on the NCW Evening News, well, message us on our Facebook page at the NCW Life channel, and uh, you can also get us there if you have breaking news. That's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more stories and others around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website, ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email news at ncwlife.com, or you could call our news hotline. That number is 888-NCWL, 888-6295. Also keep it right here on the NCW Life channel tomorrow morning for Wake Up Wenatchee Valley with your host Dan Kuntz and news director Steve Hare and more on those interviews at the Port District for Chelan County that happened earlier today. Filling in for Grant Olson, I'm Eric Grandstrom. Thank you very much for watching our evening news. Have a great night, and we'll see you here tomorrow on Wednesday. This is TV. This.